folks. Welcome to part two of the centrifugal casting machine. Um, as you can see I've uh, got one or two little steps further. Um, to power this what I'm using is my uh, bench top power supply um, which is 20, um, up to 30 volts, um, two channels. Um, what I've done, I've fastened some banana sockets and used normal banana connectors to power the mortar. The mortar inside here is one of these <coughs> and you can see the, the, the layout um, of um, the spinning plate itself. Um, the both I think th 5 8 thick um, and then they've got the brass insert in the centre which is pressed in. This one's actually for a, a slow speed grinder which I'll come to um, later on. The actual centrifugal machine now has got its spinning disc in and then I've made a flask from 2mm wall, 4 inch diameter um, stainless steel which fits into that little groove. There's actually two little pins that go across which I haven't put in yet that's that there, there to go in. But um, what I'll do, I'll, uh, I'll spin the motor up for you. Um, I'll use the the power of this set that set that to um, 24 volts because the motor is a 24 volt motor. So as soon as I turn on the unit will fire up, and you can hear um, it's quite a noisy motor because it's geared. It's a little gearbox on the top like this one, but it gives it very very high torque, a lot of power. Um, so that's that would be the machine turned on there. Um, ready for pouring the molten liquid in. So I will ramp that down slowly. I ramp it down slowly because when you turn it off suddenly, because it's a gearbox, it stops instantly and that puts strain on the gears. So what what would be um, the normal use would be the crucible there full of, um, sorry, this, the flask full of investment with your models in. Place that in there. Then you... Um, Turn the unit on to 24. That will be spinning. When you drop your molten liquid in the central hole, there's a plate to go on the top of here, which I haven't made. But that would be it, the machine running there as the molten silver was poured in into the investment. And then uh, once it's solidified, which is uh, just takes about five seconds or so, you can you can stop the the mortar and take the um, the whole unit out um, with obviously with gloves on and drop that into a bucket of water and then the investment explodes off and you can see on the side of the um, flask there that we've got two little cutaways which grab up, grasp the pins, one on either side and uh, they go into the little holes either side like that <coughs> so I'll um, pause the video and show the other machine that I'm making and uh, we're back in two ticks. So here we're back again and uh, as you can see I'm using the same 24 volt um, desktop power supply. It's set at 24 volts there and what by doing again using the uh, second hand fire extinguisher body there there's a, another little unit that I'm making which I don't have to sharpen uh, my cutting tools. You can do it on a on an oil storm but you don't get it quite as accurately as you would with this. So this this machine is a is a low revolution diamond sharpener basically. Uh, it's got the same metal plate on top which I've yet to do. I'm going to put four neodymium, neodymium magnets in the top here to hold these diamond coated wheels from Mr. Mr. Chinaman and uh, they're simply with the magnets fastened into the top of the disc they get hold of it and pull it down like that. Um, I can actually show you a machine I made about a year ago over here um, which has got the similar system. I've got two big neodymium magnets in there and uh, this one travels extremely fast this machine it's too fast for what I want to do but there's another disc you just simply put it on top and the magnets really get a really good strong hold of it and stop it slipping so that's going to be the same system on the other one that I'm making now so go back to the bench 
and uh, these are relatively cheap to buy these discs you can go right up to from 120 grit all the way up to about 6,000 I've got a, a selection of them here and that's a cheaper option um, cheaper way to go than buying um, the expensive um, impregnated discs which are like hundreds of pounds each so I'll uh, turn this uh, machine on and you can see the speed that it goes so if I turn it up slowly it shouldn't jump about and with it being variable voltages on the desktop supply that I can speed up and slow slow this down at any speed I like but uh, that's at maximum voltage there, 24 volts and you can see how nice and steady it got, nice and steady it is so that would be a, a slow sharpening machine on the same kind of motor and if I wanted to get an uber uber fine um, edge with something with a very thin cutting edge I could just turn that down I can turn it down to within when it's on its maximum voltage it's 215 revolutions per minute I can turn it right down right down to 5 volts there and go at only maybe 10 revolutions a minute something like that that being a lot um, slower speed the gearbox is a lot quieter on that one and uh, these motors actually are new old off eBay and they're made by Parvalux PA P A R V A L U X, I think, and uh, relatively cheap to buy. So that's basically, in a nutshell, that that there motor fits inside here. You'll have two of these um, banana connectors, unlike the other one, and they're driven by the same machine, the desktop supply. So there's two machines there, costing well in excess retail. At three three and a half thousand pounds and it's actually come to well below a hundred pounds up to now um, which I'm really really pleased with so the aim of the game is to make savings not profits and uh, I'll be able to sharpen all my uh, woodwork chisels and, and the engraving tools on this one um, with relative ease um, but another plywood base to make for this one or I may not even do that, I might just swap them over when I'm using it or just use it as is. Um, the switch on here um, I'm not going to use for the same reason that uh, when you stop the machine it stops too abruptly because of the gearbox. It could uh, end up doing long term damage if I kept stopping them abruptly. So I'm just going to put a warning light in there like a neon just to let you know that it's on basically, the power's on. But with it running on 24 volts, it's impossible to get an electric shock that's going to harm you. I think anything up to about 50 volts, you, you're still relatively safe. But at 24 volts, you, you never, never, you'd never ever get uh, electrocuted, basically. Um, that's um, it's a two-amp supply, so there are two channels there. So you can see the uh, the usability of these things. And uh, like I say, I haven't got a metalwork lathe, but I've managed to um, to um, do this kind of uh, quality. You can see that it's running perfectly true. The actual discs themselves are not absolutely perfect. The hole's not in the middle, but the, 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 the turntable is. So, that's enough rambling, I think. So, second hand fire extinguisher, water fire extinguisher, which made two of those units um, two as new old uh, mortars for less than £50 and then the cost of the ma materials for the spinning disc that's it, so like I say, less than £100 for those two machines when they're finished um, this one is actually finished by the top plate, which I've got to put top plate on and there's the that would be the crucible that sits on top that you tip the um, the molten liquid in which I'm still to make or um, in the next year I may um, put an induction heater on top of there which I've already um, started I'll just turn that motor off so I can hear myself think and uh, 
the induction heater is complete and then bar the uh, the actual circuit board um, I still haven't uh, found exactly what I want but uh, I'll show that in another video so centrifugal caster and, uh, and flask stainless steel and a slow speed horizontal grinder so again thank you all for watching bye for now